one of my very first regrets and I only regretted it once because I learned my lesson is whatever you do, do not do bad. Hello dreamers, welcome back to A Dream in Japan or welcome to A Dream in Japan. Hajimemashite. My name is Adria and I was a jet on the jet program for four years. I have since moved on and today I decided that a lot of you are about to arrive in Japan. So I want to talk about my biggest mistakes in my first few months of the JET program. So stay tuned for some juicy details. However, I am going to tell you five things that I did that were awesome. Number one, I said yes to everything. Any party, any event that was happening, any festival that was happening, I went. It's how I made friends. It's how I made connections. It's how I had fun. It's how I, I didn't become a hikikomori. And it's how I immersed myself in the jet and Japanese culture and really learned a lot about Japan. This includes saying yes to every school event that happened. So I asked one of my teachers to like tell me the schedule of school stuff and I wanted to go to everything. I went to sports meets, I went to the cultural festival, and so I got like t-shirts from the cultural festival for ten dollars and I always paid for them and ordered them so that I could be a part of the school and really get involved. It's true that for some jets you may not have that opportunity because you're at elementary schools, you may not be at the elementary school that's having their cultural festival that day, but just ask if there's ones you can go to. I think that it's a great experience and that you should definitely say yes. Number two, I used any of my available free time to explore my little town. I would just take a walk in a different direction and look around and I discovered some crazy awesome things. I discovered a random sanctuary of stone Buddhas hidden on the side of a cliff. I discovered dilapidated shrines. I discovered not dilapidated shrines. I discovered really cool stuff and I also played a lot of Pokemon Go in those walks. Number three, I tried to learn some Japanese cooking. One reason why is because I couldn't find a lot of American ingredients that I needed, which I can find now because I've looked around, but I couldn't then. I had actually brought a Japanese cookbook that was in English so that I could make some of those things. I did switch over to eating rice and it did make life a lot easier, but now I make a mix of both and I love both. And konbini is super expensive, so I didn't want to be eating at the convenience store every day or buying bento because I don't like plastic. So I try not to buy super amounts of bentos because it's just so many plastic and styrofoam containers. So I didn't want to do that. The fourth thing that I did that I think is amazing is I called home, you know, to my family a lot. And I actually talked more with my parents that first year in Japan than I've probably talked with them in the four years previous, I really got a lot closer to my parents and really established a good, you know, online schedule, talking schedule with them. Call home. It really helps with homesickness, especially if you're feeling isolated, if you haven't made a lot of friends because of Corona or other things, definitely call home. And lastly, I didn't speak Japanese at school. It made the students who really wanted to study English seek me out and it was forced conversation. They knew I didn't know any Japanese besides like arigato and sumimasen. And so they tried really, 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 really hard to communicate with me in English. And those conversations are some of my best memories in Japan. Those are the five things that I do not regret doing when I arrived. Here are the things that I truly regret uh, in my first few months in Japan. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you found the information super useful. So please, please, please don't make the same mistakes as me, okay? Don't worry so much about doing these things the very first day. As you break in, try to do these things within your first month. That's my greatest advice. My first mistake or my first regret was that I did not put in the effort to learn teachers' names or students' names. And for me, I'm really, 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 really bad at faces and names. So I just saw the 600 students I had at one school and 400 at another, and I was like, nope. So I didn't even try. Now, obviously I learned some students' names, ones that were involved in English club or ones that 
came to me and just struck up conversations. So I probably knew maybe 10% of my students. I also did not know many of the teachers' names, which is fine if you're okay with just being like, ah, uh, Tsuyuma sensei. I knew the vice principal and the principal. I knew the office staff. Obviously, I knew my English teachers' names, but all the other teachers I didn't really know which really sucked when like a student came into the staff room and I was all alone and they were like, then where's Kiyohara-san desk? I have a chart. So it's really bad, but I had a chart so I could always find the teachers. Number two, on the note of learning people's names, um, something I didn't do my first year, but I did do in subsequent years, which was really great, was introducing myself to all of the teachers. So I didn't successfully finish my very first year. I did introduce myself to all of the teachers in the grade that I sat in. So I sat with the 10th grade teacher cohort and I did introduce myself to all of those teachers. But besides the English teachers in grades two and three or 11th and 12th grade, I didn't introduce myself to them. So when my second year of JET rolled around, I made an effort to introduce myself again, awkwardly after a year for some teachers, to everybody in the staff room. And that really helped me learn names and make some random connections with Japanese teachers. Please note that I knew no Japanese, basically, when I arrived in Japan. So my effort to introduce myself was like, Here's a candy that I bought, and hi, my name is Adria. Super basic self-introduction in Japanese to random teachers. The next three regrets are things that I did in the classroom with the students. So one of my very first regrets, and I only regretted it once because I learned my lesson, is whatever you do, do not do Dad. this symbol. The thumbs down is not a good symbol to use in Japan. It's kind of like a screw you gesture. So don't use thumbs down in the Japanese classroom. What you will learn um, very quickly or you'll learn from me here is that they use maru and batsu. Maru means okay, right? An o and batsu means no or like an x. You can use like are you feeling good? Thumbs up. Okay. But if you're asking like yes or no questions, true or false questions, always use motto and batsu. And you can teach them like true and false or yes and no. But I just stuck with motto and batsu because it was instant understanding. My next classroom regret was that in the beginning, maybe my first two or three months, I spoke too fast in general in the classroom. And even with my Japanese teachers of English, I spoke too fast. You will learn that you have to slow down your speech and with your students, obviously, you have to dumb down your vocabulary. But with your teachers, I would advise you to not dumb down your vocabulary and give them the opportunity to hear a native speaker, but do slow down a little bit, especially while your teachers are getting used to you because everybody speaks very, very differently. If you don't have what I'll consider a super normal textbook accent like America or England, if you're from anywhere else, um, especially countries that use some different vocabulary than are typically taught, for example, Australia or Ireland, it may take your teachers a little while to get used to you. So just slow down until you know which teachers you can really talk fast with and which teachers you have to talk slower or like the students with. And don't demean them, don't talk super slow, but be nice. To your students, obviously you can level up as you go, but starting slow and clear, no idioms, that's the best. My last classroom regret for my first few months was my self-introduction. I would love to do a what my self-introduction was and what it became video in the future. So if that's something that you would benefit from seeing, please let me know in the comments and I will try to get that video in the works. My self-introduction, or Chico Shokai, greatly evolved over my four years. My first year, I had asked my school, like, will I have 
access to a projector and they said yes so I had a PowerPoint and I thought it was super awesome like it was stuff about my hobbies my family cool things that I done and stuff that I liked I had created a worksheet which I didn't know if I would use and I did have a Marubatsu quiz built into the presentation. I even had, I'm from Arizona, I passed around a piece of the illegal Grand Canyon. But honestly, it was a lot of me just standing at the front of the class and talking. What I found was that the kids didn't care, really, what my favorite food was or that I'd gone bungee jumping. And they really didn't care that I liked Naruto or Rurouni Kenshin because they're too young. They don't know those old anime. They didn't know these old references. So it's great to have relatable stuff. So I always told my students, like, I collect kimono. I used to cosplay when I was in high school. They thought that stuff was cool, but it wasn't an entire presentation. Just keep in mind that it's better to have something where the students ask you questions or giving the students an opportunity to guess which of these four pictures is your favorite thing or something like that. And students are shy in Japan, so you're not going to get volunteers. So it's much better to have choices if you want them to guess. That's my regret is don't talk too fast. Have a interactive Jiko Shokai not a worksheet that they have to fill out like homework. Do something fun that they can learn about you but also enjoy. My next mistake is a personal item. I brought a whole bunch of clothing with me from America. All of my clothes showed sweat extremely easily. Or were extremely wrinkled when not being dried in a dryer. And I arrived in the summer if you are coming in the 2021 corona cohort you luckily will be arriving in the winter and won't deal with this as much but if you come on a regular year you come in the summer and like i couldn't wear any of my clothes i had to buy so many clothes my first year just to be comfortable at school and not feel like i couldn't raise my arms or turn around so if you're not a sweaty person not a problem but if you're a sweaty person really think about your clothing choices and if you are coming in the winter, definitely think about bringing layerable clothes. I was from the desert, so I didn't have a lot to begin with, but I definitely had to buy a lot of winter clothes as well. Uh, staff rooms, classrooms are sort of heated, uh, but hallways and your commute obviously isn't going to be heated and your house is likely going to have very little insulation. So you're going to be cold even at home. So definitely think about bringing layerable stuff um, especially if you are not a typical size, definitely research sizes that are available in Japan if you plan on buying those things when you arrive. So definitely keep that in mind if you're arriving in the winter. I talked about clothing and what to pack in my other videos, which I will link up here and in the description if you want to know more about packing for Japan. And the last two are more personal as well. So in my first year, I did not create a savings plan. You make a lot of money as a jet and it's fairly cheap to live in Japan if you're anywhere outside of Tokyo. I encourage you to create a savings plan because you can easily put away half of your salary and still live pretty comfortably. So I really wish I'd done that. I did buy a lot of clothes and other stuff in the beginning, but like I could have saved more money. I was still able to save a large sum of money in the three years that I had a savings plan going, but in that first year I kind of squandered my time. So definitely think about a savings plan and also think about a study plan. So for me, I came in only knowing hiragana and katakana and the super basic phrases just so that I wouldn't sound completely awful. Knowing no Japanese was a positive on the classroom side because it meant I didn't use any Japanese in my presentations. I relied on my Japanese teachers to help translate when students didn't understand and that was great because it meant that natural English communication happened but not knowing any Japanese also meant it was very hard to do things by myself in Japan especially living in the countryside where there wasn't 
a lot of English services. And if you do know Japanese, certainly create a continuing education plan because it's very easy to take the JLPT level tests, the Japanese language proficiency tests in Japan. And the JET program actually will give some subsidies for the lower level tests if you want to take the test. So you may actually be able to take them for free. Definitely create a study plan. I did not do that for four years and my Japanese is still crap. And I've been here for four years and it's still my biggest regret. But I just got to a comfortable Japanese level because I could talk to my students and my teachers and I just felt like I didn't need to study. And now being married and living in the real world outside of the protective bubble of jet, it sucks. So definitely make a study plan in your first year. Okay, that's all for my regrets. If you have any other regrets, if you're a jet or if you have questions about any of my regrets, please leave a comment below. Okay, thanks so much for watching the video. Sorry that it's a little bit late. I've been super busy and I super appreciate every single subscriber and watcher. You guys are awesome. I know you are dreaming of being in Japan, so keep dreaming, dreamers.